All right, we're live here for Core Principles, I believe first ever Facebook Live. If it's not Core Principles first ever, it's definitely my first ever. I'll we'll give people a couple minutes to hop on just in case they're running a little late. I'm gonna hang out here with my coffee and take a couple more sips before we prepare. <clears throat> So, in case you don't know, today's topic that we're going to be talking about is stress and weight loss and how to win the battle. I chose this because it didn't seem like a more appropriate time this year to talk about this because you know, we're all dealing with tons and tons of stress that we can't control. But there are certain things that we can control that we're going to touch on today. So if you do join me live and you have any questions, feel free to just drop a, a comment below and I'd be happy to answer it. I'd love for this to be super interactive. And if you're watching this later on and it's the recording, uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment about a question you may have, whether it's something that I talked about or it's something that I didn't talk about, and you just want me to answer it. I'd be more than happy to. Looks like we got one person here. Kind of my first time, so I can't figure out who it is, but I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being here. I'm gonna give people like one more minute, and then we'll get started. And sometimes we tell some uh, bad jokes when we're here at the gym, so I can do it now too. So did you know that Australia's biggest export is boomerangs? But it's also their biggest import. Mm -hmm. Just giving you a little taste of all the, all the jokes we get. Oh, look who's here. Hi, Georgie. So anything that I talk about today, uh, I learned from Georgie. So if you think that I'm somewhat decent in what I'm saying and you want to learn more about all this please 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 check out Georgie Fear and her books Lean Habits she has an awesome uh, online program Nutrition Loft I highly highly recommend it for anyone it is just so amazing she's so wonderful what she does so Georgie this might sound a little familiar why don't you see elephants hiding in trees because they're in the, they're in something with their trunks. They're in the trunks. Uh, something something like that. <laughs> yeah, I have to give me the the full answer so I can use that tonight with our with our class. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, we're going to get started because they're <laughs> Because they're goddamn good today. <laughs> that's a good one. Came out of left field. That's a curveball right there. <laughs> wow. I'm definitely using that one tonight. Thank you for that, Georgie. Now I know this Facebook Live was worth it. <laughs> so, like I said, today I want to talk about stress and your impacts on your weight loss, but also just your overall health and your eating habits and, and eating skills. So like I said, this year has probably been one of the most stressful years for almost everyone out there. There's so much going on, so many changes in our world that we can't control, so many new things we have to adapt to. I know when this uh, pandemic first started, I was super stressed, trying to figure out what we were gonna do for work, having to change our whole model into a virtual. And it was stressful, but it allowed me to grow and allowed me to get better at what I do, which is the good part of stress, right? We don't want to live a life where we have zero stress at all because stress does help us improve. It helps us learn things. It helps us grow and it helps us get better. But <clears throat> some chronic stress or even acute high levels of stress can bring on some unwanted things. When we're stressed, it's super easy that we might have gained a couple extra pounds or you didn't lose those few pounds that you wanted to. 
chances are you're moving a little bit less if you're more stressed. I know a lot of people are still working from home, so they're definitely moving a lot less. They have, they don't have that commute anymore. They're going from one room in their house to the next and back to the other. Uh, along with stress comes some more emotional eating and tons and tons of other things. So today we're gonna talk about some strategies that you can use to try to uh, reduce your stress a little bit or manage your stress, I like to say, because again, we're not gonna reduce it completely because we do want a little bit of stress. And we're also gonna talk about how stress impacts your weight loss journey. And before we get into that, I wanna be super clear that none of these uh, strategies that I'm gonna talk about are gonna work for everybody. Everyone's a little bit different. And again, none of them are gonna eliminate stress completely. We wanna make sure we have that good middle ground of having a little stress. So if you have been following uh, our stuff for a little while and read some of our blogs and kind of follow our philosophy on nutrition, you know that we're not pro-dieting. We don't recommend people diet. We don't give people meal plans. We work on uh, them as a human and as a whole. So we never recommend people start diets, but now more than ever, I probably would say is the worst time to really start a diet. And I'm gonna get more into that why, but diets cause extra stress. We already have enough, enough stress in our life. We don't need to add stress by adding a diet into our life. And again, I'm gonna to touch on that in a little bit. So first thing we're gonna talk about is why managing stress is important for your weight loss. So like I said, high stress times in our lives are generally associated with weight gain. When we're super stressed out, studies show that it actually makes us hungrier. And if we're hungrier, we're probably gonna eat more. And if we eat more, we're consuming more calories. Weight loss comes down to calories in versus calories out. So not only do we eat more, but studies also show that when we're stressed, we actually have an increased craving for higher fat food and higher sugary food. So let's think about a time you're stressed. Maybe it was this week with work, something was going on, your boss was pissing you off, you were stressed. Did you really crave a plate of broccoli? Or did you crave those potato chips or that Ben and Jerry's that has been in the freezer? You crave comfort foods like some people might call it, the high fat and high sugary foods. Without getting into the nitty gritty details, our body does process food a little bit different when we are stressed. So process it a little different. You might be um, absorbing more calories than you normally would. You might not be burning as much. So there's a little impact there. Uh, reducing our stress or managing our stress really only helps so much. So this is one part of the puzzle. But like I said, this is one part of the puzzle that diets never, never address. Diets only focus on the specific food that you're eating, which when we work with our nutrition clients, we do talk about the foods they're eating because that is important. I'm not denying that importance, the importance of that. But you also want to look at other things. Look at ourselves as humans and look at what's going on in our lives. So along with uh, diets increasing stress, we also know that super high level and super intense exercise can also lead to high levels of stress that is not beneficial. So if you're not allowing your body to recover well, if you're not sleeping well, if you're not allowing your body to relax and, and enjoy things and you're always on the go, super high energy, exercising as hard as you can each time you're in the gym or every day, it's not gonna help you reach your goals any faster. So how does managing your stress actually lead to weight loss? So a couple statistics to show or to talk about, 40% of people increase their food intake with acute stress. So with a, a small window of stress, they eat more. And out of those 40%, the studies show that most of those people were actually restricted eaters. So people who cut out certain food groups, maybe they don't eat any carbs or they don't eat fats. People who give themselves 
a time frame that they can only eat during certain periods of the day. Um, or people who, you know, count and measure each little bite that they put in their mouth. Those people are more likely to increase their food intake with acute stress. We all know that person, and it may be you, who Monday through Friday is, you know, perfect. They eat exactly what they plan. They eat their vegetables, their protein, this and that. Then over the weekend, something happens, and it all goes down the drain. They let it all go. They eat those high-fat, high-sugary foods. Limiting yourself completely during the week doesn't always lead to long-term success because you could then end up overeating. Like I said, everyone's a little different. So I said 40% of people increase their food intake with acute stress. But on the other hand, about 40% of people actually decrease their food intake with acute stress. So I feel like I keep repeating myself, but this is another issue that diets have. Diets just give you a strict set of rules and don't give you guidelines that you can adjust based off what works for you. So right here, it just shows 40% of people increase their food, 40% decrease. So everyone's a little different. So just giving yourself a strict set of rules doesn't always work. <clears throat> Acute stress is pretty normal, right? We all have a little bit of stress throughout the day. We might have a stressful morning and then a less stressful afternoon. Chronic stress is what is a little more difficult and actually leads to more cravings of our high fat, high sugar foods, when we're stressed all the time. We don't have those ups and downs. When we have that chronic stress, we actually have some changes in the hormones in our body. So when we are increased or higher stressed for a long period of time, we actually have a greater increase in a hormone called cortisol in your body, which can increase hunger, increase craving. It can have a little impact on how our insulin works in our body, which like I said, will lead to more calories consumed and maybe less calories burned. Stress can also have a big impact on decision-making in our brains. Let's say you just had a super stressful day at work and you have to decide what's for dinner right after that stressful day of work. You don't have much decision-making left or energy in your brain left to make decisions that are in line with your goal. You're probably gonna make a decision that is easiest. And oftentimes the easiest thing is to grab the first thing that you see, maybe grab something, some takeout because you don't have to cook. So you're not making decisions all the time that are really in line with your goals. So that's really how stress impacts our weight loss, kind of on a, a high level, broad picture. Obviously we can get into the nittier and grittier, but I don't think it's valuable just to tell you how stress impacts your weight loss. I think it is valuable for you to kind of understand why but I think it's also valuable to make sure that you have some strategies to help manage your stress. So what are you gonna do the next time you feel super stressed? And that's what I'm gonna talk about next. So again, reiterating myself, but stress-free is not the goal. The goal is to minimize your stress, manage it, but also deal with stress well. So have strategies that you can go to that when you are stressed, when something does come up, you can apply and deal with it. So the first thing I want you to think about is this concept of feeling in control. I know nowadays there's a lot of things that feel like it's so far out of control, out of our control, that it's hard to recognize what we can control. So when we think about feeling like you're in control, all I want you to try is change your wording up a little bit. So next time you catch yourself saying, I have to, let's say, I have to do laundry, or I have to pick up the kids, or I have to cook dinner, I want you to reframe that and reword that and say, I want to. So I want to do laundry because I wanna wear my favorite shirt to work tomorrow. Or I wanna pick up my kids from school because I'm excited to hear about what they did today. And, and hang out with my kids or 
I want to cook dinner because I know when I cook dinner, the family all sits together and we have some good quality family time. So sometimes just rewording the way we say things can have a big impact on our stress. You feel more in control, you feel less stressed and less like you have to do things. <clears throat> Another thing you can think about is visualizing certain stresses as obstacles or challenges. So I think a, a big thing here is stress that comes up at work. So let's say your boss, you have a meeting with your boss and they throw this big, big project on you and it's something new that you've never done before. It's super easy to get stressed, overwhelmed. How am I gonna do this? I have a certain deadline. What am I gonna do? I've never done this before and kind of let those feelings overwhelm you. But you can try to reframe your mind and say, Ooh, this is this is kind of a fun challenge. I've never done this before. I'm excited to see what the outcome is. I'm excited to see what I learned from it, what I can uh, apply to other parts of my career from what I learned from this project. And maybe even think, well, I'm excited because I know this project is gonna help my company grow, which is gonna help me personally grow within the company and uh, whether it's financially, getting a new promotion, something like that. So trying to look at certain challenges and uh, stress as obstacles. So like I said in the beginning, too much exercise can actually increase the amount of stress, but the right amount of exercise can really de de decrease the amount of stress, excuse me. So it's kind of this bell curve with diminishing returns. So at some point we get to the top of the bell curve and that's our sweet spot. We know with that much exercise, we're gonna reduce the stress most. But then we know as we increase exercise, our ability to recover and de-stress starts to decrease. So you wanna make sure you find that sweet spot and chances are you're gonna vary back and forth. So it's not like every workout, every time you exercise is gonna be the right amount. Sometimes you might exercise a little less and you don't relieve all that stress. Sometimes you might exercise a little too much and you're more stressed, but all that matters is you kind of listen to your body and kind of figure out how you recover and adjust for next time. I know when this uh, lockdown first started, people weren't going to the gyms as much. I had stress just like everyone else and I found myself running more than ever. I'm not a big runner, I never really have. But that was my stress relief. I would put my headphones in, listen to music, get outside and just kind of zone out. I made sure that I didn't run too much, that I would be hurting for the next couple of days and uh, would increase my stress. I kind of found that sweet spot. One other thing that has worked super well for other clients is this idea of journaling. You could either truly buy a journal, write things down, pen and paper. You could keep notes in your phone uh, I know there's tons and tons of apps you can use too, but writing things down, whether you just keep it to yourself or you do journal and share it with someone, uh, is really gonna help you deal with what's going on in your head and your stress. One thing that's important while you're journaling, and I know I'm guilty of this a lot, is trying to avoid a couple things. So we don't wanna tell the story over and over and over again to the point where it's just stuck in our mind. So let's say you had a tough conversation with someone at work and you're journaling, you're, you're talking about it. You wanna kinda of get it out and then let it be. You don't wanna get it out and then continue to think about it and replay that situation and keep going back and forth on it. Also, try not to use a lot of shoulds. When you're saying should or like should have, you're thinking what you would have done different. You're trying to go in the past. But you can't really change the past. So there's really no point. Yeah, you can look at it as if the situation arises again, next time I'm going to, but then you're looking at it in uh, the future tense as opposed to the past tense, which is gonna help you build that growth mindset. It's super common again, trying to take it out or put it on others. Probably need that a little bit every now and then, but try not to blame everything on other people it's never really going to help you feel good you're always going to have that kind of upset feeling in your stomach and rough rough feeling so that's not good 
journaling, overall wonderful, wonderful uh, strategy to deal with stress. Next one, a little tough right now, but trying to take some vacations and breaks when you can. So I know you can't really travel the world or travel like you used to or probably like you want to, but you can still take little breaks. Maybe you can take a day off, take a long weekend, go for a little hike, make a little uh, staycation at home with your family. Keep those things in mind because they're super important. And then the last thing is mindfulness and med meditation. Mindfulness and meditation can mean so many different things. Like meditation doesn't mean sitting in a dark room with candles lit for a half hour not saying a word and being completely silent. It could mean pausing for a couple seconds and just taking a deep breath or focus on your breathing. Uh, I know one thing that really works for me in this kind of category of mindfulness meditation is uh, the Calm app. So there's an app called Calm and there's tons and tons of other ones just like this, but they can have uh, like sleep stories that are just very visual stories, kind of relaxing. The authors are all uh, very well spoken and kind of have soothing voice. They do do some breathing exercises, some meditation. So if I'm feeling super stressed, sometimes I'll just throw my headphones on, listen to one of those and kind of relax a little bit. So those are the key takeaways here. And like I said, what's most important now, if you watch this video and hopefully you enjoyed it, is taking action on this. Because more information doesn't lead to changes. Action leads to changes. So what I want you to think about or, or try is pick one of those strategies that I just talked about that you can use next time you come up or deal with a stressful situation and try to use that to manage your stress, to deal with it a little better, and then reflect on it when you're done. Did it work for you? Do you really feel less stressed? Do you feel like it was a waste of time? If it worked for you, awesome. You found something that works. Just stick with that. Don't make it more complicated than it has to be. If it doesn't work, that's perfectly cool too. You tried it, you made it an experiment, and you learned something. The next thing you do is maybe you just try something else. And you do the same thing and you repeat that until you find a solution that works for you. Now, this list obviously wasn't the, aren't the only things you can do for stress. Those are just a couple of the, the big things that generally work for most of our clients. So if there are other things that you know that work for you, keep going for it. What I wouldn't recommend is trying to do all of these things next time you deal, you're dealing with some stress. That's probably gonna lead to more stress. You wanna make sure that you can do it and feel confident that you can do it. Set yourself up for success, just like the way we talk about uh, when we think about exercises, when we think about food and nutrition, we wanna apply that same concept here for managing stress. So I hope you all enjoyed this little live. Thank you for joining me if you are here. Like I said, I'm gonna save this and post it on our page. If you do have other questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave a comment on the video and I'll get back to you. Or if you're not comfortable posting it on Facebook but you do wanna talk about something, I will uh, comment my email address on the post. Feel free to send me an email. I'm here to help, we're all here to help and get through these tough times. So again, thanks for joining and I'll talk to you soon.